you are Comrade Ivan Ivanovich Privalov. In 1961, you were selected for the Shukovgrad Interionaut Exploration Programme SSSR. Despite failing your basic physical and being caught cheating on your entrance exams, on the morning of the 12th of April 1962, you boarded a rocket drill containing the experimental device Little Orpheus with the purpose of descending through the Earth's crust to discover the relative hollowness of the interior and its suitability for colonization. No, you've lost me, General. Did I do what? You and Little Orpheus were dropped into an extinct volcano to drill to the center of the Earth and find out if we could establish a city there. Note, if you will, that this date is over three years ago. Tres años. Tardó tres años en salir. Vale, pues lo que sabemos hasta ahora es que han utilizado una nave llamada el Lidl Orfeus para entrar a través de un volcán y ver si la Tierra está hueca. Que parece que sí, porque si esto es dentro de la Tierra, está claro que está hueca. Los gráficos del juego son alucinantes, está muy bien hecho. Can you describe Little Orpheus to me? Of, of course. <laughs> it was uh, large and round and had something of a disagreeable smell. I was referring to its technical specification. Well, General, I am no man of science, but it had this uh, radio thing that I was supposed to use to let the surface know I had arrived, and uh, some sort of battery wrapped in this lead box. But I was told to not touch anything under any circumstances, and I did notice the engineers who worked on it were quite a shifty bunch. Está claro que no, no han elegido al más inteligente para llevar a cabo esta misión. No sé por qué han elegido a este a este tío. The little Orpheus device contained a radio transmitter capable of sending a signal through miles of solid rock. In order to boost this, a powerful energy source was required. An atomic bomb, comrade Prevalov. An atomic bomb that you have lost somewhere below the Earth's crust. Ah, yes, that bomb. <laughs> of course, General, I can explain everything. But it is a long and somewhat complicated story. And let me assure you, this is not a case of milking chickens. But you won't understand where your bomb and little Orpheus has ended up unless I start at the very beginning and you let me tell you where I've been for the last three years. From the beginning. But this had better be good. Good, General. It's more than good. It's extraordinary. And it began like this. Extraordinary sight! I realized this must be the fabled land of Plutonia, as documented by the brilliant scholar Obrachev. A trail of destruction carved by the rocket drill led down into the wild and mysterious jungle. 
the rocket drill itself must have snapped in half somewhere below Kamchatka. And little Orpheus bounced out and became lost in that prehistoric forest. If I was ever to get home, my mission was clear. To find little Orpheus. Vale, pero no la hemos visto antes. Bueno, claro, esto es el principio. El principio de la historia. Y lo que hemos visto antes del principio era el final. O sea, esto es una especie de flashback. Y entonces si habrá tardado tres años en encontrar la nave. I steeled myself and plunged deeper into that prehistoric jungle where insects the size of dogs buzzed around. Dogs. What sort of dogs? I beg your pardon, General? Large dogs or small dogs? Big like an avcharka or small like a barlonka? Does it really matter? Of course. Detail is all important. Avcharka then, General. The size of an avcharka. I find that very hard to believe. Would you find it easier if they were the size of a barlonka? No. But I am enjoying your attempts to persuade me. Vale, puedo resbalar, pero no puedo correr más de lo que ya... de lo que ya hace. No hay un botón de correr. Another part of the rocket drill. But still no sign of Little Orpheus. Vale, vamos encontrando trozos de la nave por ahí ya nos están diciendo que la nave tiene algo nuclear la bomba que nos estaban comentando antes ay mierda esto es como un parque jurásico en vez de apartarse siguen bajando por el árbol and more ancient than any known to our modern times. Estamos en los años 80. And deep below the Earth's surface, prehistoric monsters still roam freely. Yes, yes, but little Orpheus. Vale, llamar a esos monstruos en vez de llamarlo dinosaurios. O sea, cualquiera hubiera dicho que he encontrado dinosaurios, pues no. Es un espectáculo visual, eh. A ver, hay que calcular cuando llegue la, la liana. Ahora. Este no, un tiranosaurio. Este no es herbívoro. 
Ouroboros como los otros que estaban. That terrible lizard intent on making a snack of me was none other than the most awful of the monsters, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, now you are an expert on dinosaurs. Oh, hardly an expert, General. Just educated by the best schools in the world, like all good socialists. And I remembered one crucial thing. I'm listening. Well, uh, its greed is without bottom. Its hunger is ferocious. But its brain is absolutely tiny. So it can roar and roar as much as it likes, but it will never be a match for the sharpened mind of the good Soviet worker. All I needed was a plan to outwit the monster. aquí puedo empujar vale puedo empujar cajas para colocarlas y poder subir bueno, cajas piedras lo que lo que haya vale hemos pasado hemos llegado un shock and surprise to find in that clearing the last part of the rocket drill more sí, encendido was the fact it had been ransacked. Someone had made off with the tools, the weapons, the rations, and the spare parts for the Pragviev. I began to suspect foul play. Perhaps Little Orpheus was not lost at all, but stolen. All I could do was follow the trail further into Plutonia. Alguien vive aquí. Puedo ir más rápido. Hombre, lo lógico es no quedarse ahí parado, es ir todo lo rápido que pueda. Vale, pues lo han saqueado todo. Ahí está. ¡Oh! Así me va a ver. Ah, no, ahora. Vale, vale. Lo hace automáticamente. Se agacha solo y cuando sale... Empieza a correr. A ver por dónde va a salir. Ah, me vio. So we all agree this was the fabled land of Pluto. Ah, pero no me atacó. I don't remember accepting that. I will admit it might not have been Plutonia if you are prepared to accept the dinosaur. This isn't a negotiation. You can disagree all you like, but there's very little you can do hey. to persuade me it wasn't a dinosaur. I might not be able to persuade you, but I can always have you shot. Vale, no puedo mover la caja. No puedo mover la caja, ¿por qué? Ahora sí. Aquí es lo máximo. Y hacia atrás, ahora. Ahora sí. Vale, en esa liana no se, no se engancha. Ahora sí. Me parece que mientras están hablando hay cosas que no puedes hacer. Tienes que esperarte. Yo creo que tiene que ser para... Para no avanzar demasiado mientras están hablando. Me 
está viendo. Vale, tengo que empujar la caja hasta allí, pero no sé si me ve desde ahí. a que se vaya de, de ese sitio y ahí también tengo que esperar a ver, tengo que esperar detrás de estos árboles ahora se va Levanta la cabeza, no cuando la agacha. Ahora, que está detrás de los árboles. Voy a esperar otra vez. Ahí me ve. Y ahora tiene que... Ahora. Sabrio venga, seguro. Me ha ido cerca, eh. ¿Qué me estás contando? Si me, me puedo agachar, no, no me puedo agachar, pero me puedo quedar quieto. Me da a mí que el tiranosaurio no me va a ver si me quedo quieto. Me confunde con un huevo. La música es genial aquí. an egg yes general i hid in an egg i am glad to hear your military training was not wasted 
If only I had a single legion of men as brave and ingenious as you, with only a hundred men equipped with eggs to hide in, we could roll across Europe in a day. <laughs> General, are you mocking me? You are as sharp as you are brave, Talarish. Todavía está por ahí. No, es por debajo. Mira, una cabeza... Bueno, esto está claro que... Alguien vive aquí y desde hace mucho tiempo, porque... No solo por tallarlo, sino que está... Parece que está destruida. La estatua. Vale, ¿y ahora qué? No llega. Por este lado, sí. No, no, no. ¿Por qué te caes? ciudad lleva destruida mucho tiempo a ver si lo empujo no, hacia allá no, tengo que empujarlo hasta ese lado mucho en saltar ahora hay que saltar antes No sé si voy a necesitar la caja. No, no creo. No. I couldn't believe it. I still struggle to believe it. A whole lost city buried in that jungle deep below the crust of the earth. Who would have thought it was possible? Who indeed? It is of course a shame you didn't think to record the moment for posterity and help us all to get over our disbelief. But I did, General, I did! My training was excellent, and I immediately took out my Kamsamoliets and began to document all I could. No creo que llegue desde aquí. No llegue. Ah, sí, sí que llega. So, where is this camera now, then? Ah, General, yes. <laughs> well, what, of course, I, I meant to say was my training was excellent, and I immediately reached for my camera, only to realize it must have been torn from my utility belt in the crash 
and lost forever in that forgotten jungle. No va a llegar. Pero... Con esta piedra yo supongo que sí. Lo que no sé es cómo... Y va a llegar al otro lado. A la liana sí. Pero desde la liana hasta allí... También. This beast had returned and was hungrier than ever. Perhaps it was angry it had been fooled by an egg-wearing idiot. <laughs> it may have been small of brain, but it was grand of stature. Whereas you, Ivan Ivanovich, are lacking in both departments. Presuming there were no more eggs to hide in, did you have a new plan? I did, General. Please, do tell me, what was this brilliant plan? I ran like hell, General. demasiado tarde Please do tell me what was this brilliant plan I ran like hell general Salvo por ahora. Will our intrepid yet doomed hero survive the jaws of the ferocious dinosaur? Will he meet his end miles underground as an aperitif for a ravenous raptor? What dark secrets could be buried in the lost city of Agatha? Will the general ever discover the location of his lost bomb? All of these questions and more will be answered in the next exciting episode of Little Orpheus! What luck! What a miracle! One moment I was rushing into the fetid tonsils of that horrible monster. The next... I was plummeting downwards to the jungle floor beyond its reach. I prayed I would land on something soft. Perhaps your head. But nothing, nothing could have prepared me for what was about to unfold. An epic saga of pride, power, and revolution. A struggle for freedom the likes of which our world has never seen. And it happened like this. Ahí están. Ahí están. Oh, se parece, no se parecen a los Morlock. De, ¿Cómo se llama la película? Viaje en el tiempo. O la máquina, la máquina del tiempo. Who were those strange, gentle monsters who towered above me? I could only guess they were the lost tribe of the Mielf. 
an earlier race of people. But why were they so fearful of those ancient gates that lay just beyond their village? And why did they seem to recognize me? Why? Yes, I'm also wondering why. No, a cock, General. Who was I to question such things? Trapped as I was deep underground. I was more curious, I must admit, about the location of Little Orpheus. Talk of a great city, a mighty power. Yet your nymph squatted like savages in huts at its boundary. They did. And the answer to that mystery lay beyond my grasp at that point. Because it was a wonder, it truly was. esto voy a tener que repetirlo varias veces el llevar una de esas bolas de energía a su lugar correcto para que se abra una puerta o se active algo Should you seek Agartha now, you wouldn't find it. It has been utterly destroyed. Sí, seguro que fue él. Aha. Oh. Utterly destroyed? Utterly, General. A tragic loss. A convenient loss. I imagine archaeologists weeping as I tell you. But most importantly, before we continue, you must understand one crucial fact about its destruction. Which is? It wasn't my fault. Ah, no, ya verás como sí. Ya verás como fue su culpa. ¿Están presos? ¿Por quién? ¿Quién los está presando? Son ellos mismos. Cuando se ponen un casco de eso se como que se convierten en trapped and kidnapped and dragged away only to return as vicious foot soldiers to some unknown tyrant. Exacto. There was something familiar about the stokova they were forced to wear on their heads, which I was sure were being used to control and enslave them. And what was eso es. general It curiously resembled the radio sets I used to tinker with as a child. Radio sets? It was very curious. It was very curious. It was extremely curious. Cuando se le ponen los cascos, los esclavizan. Y ellos mismos ponen cascos a, a los demás. No sé si habrá una manera de liberarlos. Mira, ahí tenemos otra de esas, de esas palancas. que seguro que sacará una bola de energía. Y 
esto abrirá la puerta que está aquí, ¿no? Sí. Igual que antes. An ancient technological metropolis, powered by a glowing resin carved from the very earth? A glowing resin carved from the very earth. Do you see, General? <sighs> I fear you are about to enlighten me. El general no se está creyendo nada de lo que le está contando. Y a lo mejor es que se lo está inventando de verdad, eh. Ya verás como al final todo esto es una mentira. Little Orpheus must have been drained by the impact, but whoever had stolen it and brought it here was no doubt planning to use the Adarkan resin to charge up the atomic bomb, restoring the device to its full potential. What sort of man would come up with such a monstrously reckless scheme? Perhaps the type of man who has such a limited understanding of atomic energy that he thinks an ancient metropolis can be powered by shiny marbles. eso. Ah, estamos subiendo. O sea, esto es por tiempo. What sort of man would come up with such a monstrously reckless scheme? Perhaps the type of man who has such a limited understanding of atomic energy that he thinks an ancient metropolis can be powered by shiny marbles. No sé si llega. Creo que tengo que esperar a que suba un poco. Y ahora sí. seguir subiendo y para allá tampoco así que bajar vale aquí tenemos la bola que supongo que será la que acabo de activar Voy a, voy a ver cómo se mueve el que está ahí detrás Porque supongo que tendré que llevar esa bola hasta el final Sin que me vea Vale, llega hasta aquí Y ahora se da la vuelta y llegará hasta el, hasta el final otra vez Ah, no hagas eso Ah, 
me da tiempo, sí, creo que me da tiempo. Vale, otro contemporizador. Es súper rápido este. A ver. No, creo que tengo que saltar directamente a la cadena. Me parece, vamos a ver. No, no va a llegar. Pues a lo mejor llega saltando. Sí. Ah, corre. Es que el otro está abajo. ¿Te queda ahí? se va yo iba a esperar a que se vaya pero no se agarró ¿por qué? podía haberse agarrado perfectamente I am curious, Ivan Ivanovich. You talk and talk about this great subterranean city, yet what you describe sounds strangely familiar. It does in some way bear an uncanny resemblance to the glorious architecture of comrade Alexei Dushkin. Wouldn't you agree? Done yet, General? I have never heard of this great Tavarish. Dushkin or his works? Interesting. Because you were photographed on the steps of his marvelous Visotka na Krasnich Varotach. Yes, I'm going to With the Glavny Constructor. That was the chief designer? The sweaty little fat man with the bad hearing? Mind your mouth, Ivan Ivanovich. And don't think you can distract me by slandering one of the great visionaries of our time. Without him, neither of us would be sitting here now. I must remember to thank him for that, General. Ah, no me da tiempo. Va muy justo. Pero bueno, al menos ya es el camino. Y yo creo que habrá que saltar justo en el último momento. Eso es. Hay que saltar.
Those enslaved mink were trying to stop me. I was sure of that now. I find myself sympathizing with them, I must admit. No, General, then I have failed to win you over. Uh-huh. A point of agreement at last. Ahí no puedo pasar. Y en ese punto va una bola. Una bola de energía. Y puedo volver. Vale. Vale, entonces es por ahí. bola se atasca en algún sitio, ¿no? Algo hace. Ahora sí. No se atasca, sino que el, el puente que está ahí no deja que la bola llegue hasta este punto. Ahora la puedo arrastrar hasta aquí y a ver qué pasa. Me puedo, ya verás, me puedo proteger detrás. Corre, corre, corre. Must ask again, General. Are you mocking me? That would be unprofessional, comrade. I will try harder to convince you then. It is, after all, a cautionary tale of unleashed tyranny. It is a cautionary tale of unleashed idiocy. But please, do continue. Vale, ¿y ahora qué? Eso es otro de los trenes. Sí. Corre. Empecé a correr demasiado tarde. from the cable car onto a plateau at the center of the city, where a palace, a vast acropolis, stood. I was reminded of Chelyabinsk Sorok. May I ask how you know of Chelyabinsk Sorok? My Aunt Marsha was a traveling tinker who married a beef investigator from Zlatoust. She told me of a secret but wonderful city in the West. An edifice of sheer power, humbly serving the will and needs of the people. Yes, unfortunately, that story didn't end so well. Uh, no. That's what Auntie Marsha told me. <laughs> and perhaps that is why I was also reminded of it. Because the moment I touched the floor in that place, I could tell something was very, very wrong. Get 
atar su mano. Pensaba que tenía que atar la cadena a la bola esa. Venga, antes casi lo hizo, ¿no? No, no, esta bola, yo pensaba que esta bola había que empujarla, pero no. huge resin sphere that overshadowed all of the others. I caught glimpses through the twisted architecture. And it was then I saw him, him, the thief, the enslaver, the tyrant, sucking the power from this wondrous city as he drained the very life blood of the ancient civilization and drew it into the atomic embrace of little Orpheus. With a song in my heart, I raced onwards to stop him. Y tengo que llevarla hasta el final. Esta sí. Esta sí me la puedo llevar. se activará lo que está aquí y otro temporizador a ver qué es lo que activa esto vale, mientras sigan mirando a, arriba bien ah puedo subir ahí Drained of its power, the magical heart of the city cracked, and it sent shockwaves through the world around me. A true monster general, willing to bring down the mountain itself upon Agatha and bury it forever in his ruthless scheme. I could not save that wondrous place, general, to my shame and regret. But I resolved myself to avenge the men, to recapture Little Orvius, and to bring that tyrant to justice. como Indiana Jones
careless hero fall forever through those unknown skies? Will he discover the identity of the brutal thief commanding the army of the Menk? What chance does he have of ever returning to his beloved homeland? How long can the general's patience last? All of these questions and more will definitely be answered in the next exciting episode of Little Orpheus. I plummeted down through that weird sky towards a great turbulent ocean that roared and swelled. A ferocious sea that offered no hope of survival. I thought of home and wept, unaware that in an instant my fortunes would be changed by an event so bizarre I almost hesitate to tell you. And it happened like this. A giant Whale? It was huge, General. You were swallowed by a giant whale. Yes, General. You look remarkably well for a man who was swallowed by a whale. I am blessed with a strong constitution, General. Vale, esto es como la historia de Jonás y la ballena, o como Inocho. Es que todo esto se lo está inventando, seguro. And I assume you are now going to tell me how you managed to escape from the belly of this giant whale. Naturally, General. And I must say, it really was a fascinating glimpse into the interior life of one of our world's most magnificent beasts. I consider myself a wiser man after this experience. a lecture on the subject to Moscow University Zoological Society, if you like. I only want to help. Hmm. The Moscow University Zoological Society has, I suspect, better things to do than listen to the ramblings of a man who claims he was swallowed by a whale. People can be so closed-minded. I supongo que hay que ir rápido porque si no, esto se volverá a llenar. Absolutely, General. I will tell you directly of my miraculous escape from the belly of the whale. You simply won't believe what happened next. That is becoming a dangerously overused phrase, comrade. And so I found myself deep within the whale's organs. A strangely beautiful place. A sort of fleshy wonderland. A glade of polyps and globules. A landscape as awe-inspiring in its way as the forests and mountains of Altai. Oh, my home, General, that I yearned and longed for and only hoped as I hope not, that I might one day see again. I think we're all longing for home at this point. Oh, with warm slippers, a mug of steaming spitzin, and a roaring fire. Not far from home, trapped inside a monstrous fish with only the strange and evil-looking worms that infested its gut for company. With only one's dedication to one's country and mission to keep one from falling into despair. But no, General, I could not. I had to escape to find little Orpheus and my way back to the surface and home. Solo era por si acaso arriba había algo. Oh, cuidado. 
Mirad. Hasta ahora los gusanos no me han hecho nada. Worms, you say. Living inside the way. Oh, they were horrid things, those worms, General. And most unwelcome, I would say. Parasites. More of the tremendous sizes they could grow to. At that point, my thoughts were only of escape. And I had a plan. Yes, I'm sure you did. Los gusanos lo que están envenenando la ballena desde dentro. Ah, no. A ver. Mira a saltar. Normalmente el botón que hay que pulsar aquí es el de deslizarse. Pero ahora es saltar. Pero hace el mismo efecto, qué raro. O sea, no son parásitos. Pero a los demás no les puedo hacer nada, pero bueno. A ver, esto. Nada. These worms, they made your Nibirayatni way sick. Wherever they attached themselves, the flesh began to turn gray and die. It was a truly distressing sight. And I resolved myself to assist the whale by removing the leeches wherever I could find them during my escape. simple plan, General. I would climb up through the whale's throat into its mouth, then wait until it opened it to feed and swim out. Ah, yes. Brilliant, Ivan Ivanovich. Only one or two minor flaws with it. For example, did it not occur to you that the whale will likely be deep underwater when it ate? We brother, General, but I am a strong swimmer. As a child, my parents would take us to holiday near Irkutsk, where we took constitutionals in the waters of Lake Baikal. In fact, my mother often called me her Malinki Marskoy Kotik. <laughs> Giant worm for a giant whale, huh? At the risk of repeating myself, it was huge, General. Mm. The 
Moscow University Zoological Society may be interested after all. Verán que volveremos a ver al, al gusano este otra vez. Let us take a moment, Ivan Ivanovich. Your ridiculous plan to escape through the mouth of the whale failing, you would now have me believe you had embarked on some misguided crusade to free it of the worm infestation. To what end, exactly? When one suffers, we all suffer, General. El ojo. Pero el ojo de qué? El de la ballena no puede ser, porque si estamos dentro. Ideological commitment is admirable, comrade, but, but... I concluded that if I could find the root of the infestation and neutralize it, the whale could mount a spirited counterattack against the worms. Por lo, me, por lo que me ha costado llegar hasta ahí. Ahora. Ah, llego. Sí. And then, victorious. The whale would surface to expel the remaining poisonous muck and slime from its body. And at that point, I could escape through the nearest convenient orifice. In this case, most likely the blowhole. That is the most revolting thing I've ever heard. General, we are Russians. We have withstood the sheer force of nature and history and emerged triumphant. No puedo... An expedition to sí. the nasal sphincter of a gargantuan whale is not... Vale, right, vamos a ir quitando los parásitos. Supongo que lo que hay que hacer es esto. Quitar todos los parásitos. Eso es el cerebro. No me había fijado. Salta, salta. Vale, me imagino que al otro lado habrá más. I suppose you would have me believe that the whale was grateful to you. Oh, well, General, that would be presumptuous. I doubt it was even aware of my presence. But I had more immediate problems. 
For if the whale might have been relieved by my actions, the worms were enraged. Worms do. Furious. Worms. Incandescent. Do not feel. Violently indignant. Emotions. Demented, General. Deranged. Enough! ¿Y ahora qué? Corre. Where is little one? Where is my boy? Unless you are trying to tell the way to swim that is way. Ah, no, me va a matar. Me va a matar. No, Ivan Ivanovich, you are absurd. Your story is absurd. This whole ridiculous fairy tale is absurd. No, 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 no. Le di, le di bien. Pero no sé por qué no, no se arrastró. A ver si, sí, a ver ahora. Ahora sí. No, it did not, General. That would be absurd. No, Ivan Ivanovich, you are absurd. Your story is absurd. This whole ridiculous fairy tale is absurd. Hardy hero escape the furious worm. Will he be doomed to spend his days trapped in the innards of a bad tempered cetacean? Where is the whale swimming to in such a rush? And what will it do when it gets there? Is the general about to lose his temper and order the cosmonaut shot? All of these questions and more must surely be answered in the next exciting episode of Little Obvious! From the whale's blowhole like a supersonic jet. And below me, the ocean <laughs> <can't wait> no <laughs> bay studded with white shapes. You will be amazed as my epic journey unfolds. For here, it was about to take a most unexpected turn. And it happened like this. Empieza un capítulo, empieza cojeando. Siempre le pasa algo. It was a beautiful but deadly wasteland, a freezing cold, brutally chilling, enough to kill a man in hours. Yet here you are. Indeed, General. An impoverished childhood playing in the streets of Omsk during those bitter winters had made me hardy. I thought you said you grew up in Altai. Ah, General, the life of a poor toy maker's family. We had to move from place to place just to find work. Salto, se quedó ahí atascado.
Pero yo ahora que me deja pasar. No, no me deja pasar. se hacía de contrapunto. Uy, este es enorme, ¿eh? Otra vez lo mismo. nada, no hace nada. Pues habrá que hacer algo por aquí. pasar por debajo Sonikov led there. Eh? Of course, Sonikov himself reported nothing more than a bluish fog on the horizon. Your island may be nothing more than the product of overactive imaginations. General, consider this. Imagine taking a simple peasant, a pig shepherd, for example, and telling him one day humans would fly around the earth beyond the sky. Say you were stark raving mad. Sell the phone. A ridiculous old baradati. A buffoon stuffed into a military uniform. A pridurak. A chuchala tuparile. This peasant of yours had better wash his mouth if he doesn't want to spend his holidays in Salavietsky. Perhaps you should return to your story. No puedo hacer eso. Creía que podía subir arriba. En el tronco que está arriba, pero no. Y le di. 
A veces no hace caso. Vale, me da a mí que me estoy... A... Estoy dándole antes de lo que debería. Tengo que esperar ahora. ¿No? In the cliff. I could not believe it. A hairy mammoth. elephant trapped and frozen in the ice. A mammoth? No, General, a hairy elephant. Who would <laughs> think such a thing could be? Through the blizzard, one foot grimly in front of the other, blinded by the snow, my nose becoming quite blue. My thoughts of home crushed under the weight of the plummeting temperature. I am bored, Ivan Ivanovich, and sick to my teeth of listening to this rubbish. Let us speak plainly now. You will tell me where my bomb is, or I will have you shot. I am just getting to that, General. Shot! Comrade Primal! Shot with real bullets. Fired from a real gun, not some ludicrous bultavia about uh, lost cities and dinosaurs and mink and mammoth. That was a hairy elephant. No! I will not tolerate any more! Where is the bomb, Ivan Ivanovich? Where is little Orpheus? It was right there. What? It was there. At least I realized it must be. Where? Here? On sunny land? Yes, General. Because as the storm began to clear, I realized with a strange excitement and trepidation that I was not alone on sunny land. Bueno, claro que no estás solo. Alguien te ha tenido que construir esto. Un trigo. Wait, 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 wait. Go back. You say these lifeboats came from Zaria. A Russian ship? Zarya returned home, but not with all of her crew. And here were the missing lifeboats, trapped in the ice for all of these years. And it could only mean one thing. That you are continuing to hang Lapsha on my ears.
supone que... Ahora. Ah, se supone que puedo empujarlo, pero... Que no, no quería. Baron Edward von Thor. Of course, I remember reading about this tragic expedition at school. We were taught he had died a hero's death out on the icy wastes, searching for Sanikafla. Yet, what if, what if, in doing so, he had sailed accidentally into the interior, deep below the crust of the world? A fellow citizen of the surface. I had to try and find him. My not dead, General, but quite insane. Perhaps it was the loss of the arm, or the leg, or the long years in isolation. But Toll was clearly mad. You should have got along perfectly then. <laughs> How I wish. <laughs> but no, General. Whatever Toll's intention with little Orpheus was, I had no time to consider it. I was in mortal peril once more. So, you believe that Tull had somehow enslaved the Mienkiv and bent them to his will? I do, General. It was obvious. Why else would they serve him? And how else could they be so different from their free comrades? These odd helmets they wore, it was the science of our times, no doubt about it. Although, fused with some strange crystal technology I could not recognize, to be honest with you, it didn't seem appropriate to stop and ask them. Vale, se está mirando fijo hasta ahí. Ah, no, cambia. De vez en cuando cambia.
You say he was an explorer? Yes, General, he was. He vanished some 60 years ago. I remember the story well. And you say he stole little Orphe? To get home, General, to get home. I think he must have thought he could use the atomic bomb to blast his way back to the surface. <laughs> Brilliant, Ivan Ivanovich! And you expect me to believe that a hundred-year-old madman not only survived below the Earth's crust, but enslaved this Minkiv, explored the lost worlds, and discovered the secrets of atomic power all by himself. A czarist general! An imperialist! No doubt harking back to the terrible days before the Great Revolution! And Estonian! Estonian? Estonian general! Hmm. There are wily people. away into the distance and I sometimes wondered if I would ever find my way out but I never gave up Jen of course you didn't you are a hero Ivan Ivana no general no 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 I am no hero I am a simple toy maker's son from Tomsk Omsk General Omsk you said Tomsk I said Omsk you said Tomsk but general I think I am well aware of the city of my birth perhaps all the moving around as a child confused you No me esperaba que hubiera ahí uno de uno de estos de estos tíos. No me acuerdo cómo se llama. Vale, ahí hay otro. Y arriba había otro. Sí, pero parece que no mira para acá. Se va a escapar, sí. saltar on we flew across the deserted frozen plateau I was single-handed in my pursuit dogged in my determination llega, llega. I would llega. take back little Orpheus and prevent Toll from detonating the bomb ah you are as humble as ever Tavash Well, General, you are a great military leader, a great strategist. 
whereas I am simply the humble son of a watch toy, a toy maker, and driven by patriotic fever with no regard for my own safety, I rushed blindly on. Ah, the nearest a toy. Well, General, you are a great military leader, a great strategist, whereas I am simply the humble son of a watch toy, a toy maker, and driven by patriotic fever with no regard for my own safety, I rushed blindly on. Tiene que caerle encima. No. Lleva puesto uno de los cascos. ¿No se supone que con esos cascos sea son esclavos o solo funciona con esta gente? No se lo puede quitar. Will our courageous yet unfortunate hero drown in the depths of an inhospitable frozen sea? Will he thaw out in time to prevent Tall from detonating the bomb? Will the general holiday in Omsk next year? Or Tomsk? Or perhaps both? What exactly is the difference between a mammoth and a hairy elephant? All of these questions and more should almost certainly be answered in the next exciting episode of Little Orpheus! I thought I was doomed. But a miraculous thing happened, General. I could breathe. It must have been the helmet that was jammed onto my head. It was a strange and remarkable thing. Some might almost say beyond belief. A narrow-minded fool may indeed, General. But of course, you are no Durak. But even as I sank towards the floor of that lost ocean, my journey was about to take me to darker, stranger territory than ever before. And it happened like this. Vale, menos mal que él lleva el casco puesto, porque si no... Wow, ahora los saltos son de enorme. Let me see if I have this correctly. After narrowly failing to apprehend the mad missing explorer Tull and recapture my atomic bomb in your giant snowball, you fell through thin ice and sank to the bottom of a subterranean ocean, discovering along the way that the mind control helmet you had accidentally wedged onto your head enabled you to breathe underwater and resume your pursuit across the seabed. General, you seem perplexed. Perplexed? Perplexed is that the keys to my house are not where I left them. Perplexed is the fact my dog will not eat cheese like other dogs. No, Ivan Ivanovich, I am not perplexed. Eh, si me tiro por ahí... A ver, puede ser... Como lo puedo controlar por él. No. Puedo controlarlo mientras estoy bajando en el agua. Ahora. Sí. Intrigued, then, perhaps. I'm not in sure intrigued is the correct term either. Enraged at being taken for a simpleton. Now that perhaps is a better way of describing my current state of mind. Once again, Comrade Privalov, I must correct you. 
Unfortunate is losing one's car in a snowstorm. Unfortunate is booking opera tickets on your wife's birthday and getting the date wrong. Was she furious? That is not the issue! Furious? However, now that is a good word. I could speak with your wife. Would that help? I could always have a word with her if you like. I could always have you shot. Oh, you could? But I suspect she would appreciate the gesture less. ¿Y ahora? Llegaré de un salto. Espera, no, no, no. no. Justo. Me voy con el techo. Si acaso... ¡Ay, no puedo saltar! Iba a decir, por si acaso se rompe, voy a saltar. Pero no, se te tiene que caer. A vast monster of the sea. A giant, humongous, many-armed electrical destroyer of ships and cities. Electrical? Electricity flowed along its horrible body. Sparking and stunning, all it touched, flowing like deadly rivers along its awful tentacles. Sobering discovery. Are you suggesting that the vessel simply wandered off course and sank here? That seems unlikely even by your standards. No, General, I only wish that were true. The mighty ship showed terrible scars. No, no, somebody don't carry it. Grappled and torn asunder by some huge and terrible adversary. That is indeed strange and curious. I am troubled by this discovery. Might you almost be perplexed, perhaps? Don't push your luck. <gasps> La luz le molesta. No vaya a ser que se apague, que también tenga temporizador. I was stationed at Sydney Ostrif some years ago. I am only too aware of how easy it is for the imagination to create monsters when one is exposed to lonely and dark places. My men required constant monitoring. Much like my cousin Pavel. He was also stationed at Ostrif? No, he required constant monitoring. 
he was a devil for stealing eggs. Todo es gigante. Las monedas son enormes. Los cofres gigantescos. I was también. referring to the fear that something is lurking in the darkness, something strange, brutish and ill-intentioned. Again, that sounds much like my cousin Pavel. que es una ciudad bajo el agua. There was no doubt about it, and escape was all I could think about. Naturally. That, and duty. Duty? Yes, General. After all, I had a bomb to recover from that villain Toll. How clever of you to remember that. But first, there was the issue of escape. Escape from a dreadful, grasping creature that consumed all it could reach, dragging anything that wandered within its clutches to a miserable doom. A hoarder of useless trophies and stolen goods. Mm, once again, Tavares, I suspect you are pursuing a somewhat tortuous metaphor for capitalism in the misguided hope of appealing to my political ideals.
Ahí está. A ver cómo nos libramos del bicho. Seguro que esta es la madriguera de, de la bestia. I was like a mouse, General. A little mouse being toyed with by a terrible cat. Or rather a wet mouse. I was like a little underwater mouse. Being stalked by a giant rubbery electrical cat with eight tentacles. Exactly, General. Good, I'm glad we cleared that up. You may continue. Pensaba que me iba a dar. no puede alcanzarme, pero me está vigilando. No. Roce sin querer ese punto. No, sube, sube, sube. ¿Por qué? que cae entonces no lo, no lo roce sin querer es que cayó de alguna forma cae vale y si voy a la izquierda cuando salgo de las burbujas a lo mejor no hay nada por esa parte no es pues me da a mí que tengo que subir con la burbuja y engancharme con la burbuja que está a la derecha y es saltando de, de burbuja en burbuja Enganchate, enganchate. No se va a enganchar. No se va a enganchar. Ah, saltó. No sé cómo, pero saltó. Submarines. You didn't mention submarines before, didn't I? Uh, why? No, 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 no. No, 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 ¿Dónde es un marino? Veo mina. Pero no veo su marino. particular submarines? Did you see names? Numbers? General, have you lost a submarine? I am not at liberty to answer that question as you well know. Well, General, losing one's car in a snowstorm is unfortunate as you say. But to lose a whole submarine, that could be considered careless. El submarino. And you are certain it was M. de Vesci Pizza Twist. Well, that was painted on the hull, so I can only assume so. Ah, I think I know where this dismal story is going next. You somehow miraculously brought the remaining closed cycle engine online, uh, flooded the torpedo tubes, 
dispatched the Kraken with one shot and triumphantly surfaced. No, General, that is not what happened at all. I did indeed make my way to the torpedo tubes, but for a very different purpose. After all, history has taught us that atomic power is not to be toyed with. Much like tired, impatient generals, perhaps. Particularly the perplexed ones. Indeed, General. Or like dogs that will eat no cheese. Ahora se podrá quitar el casco porque... Ahora, por fin, menuda pesadilla. ¿Y ahora qué? Ah, ah, no había visto la palanca. Venga. A correr. Yet disorientated hero end his days as socialist sushi. Will his daring exploits be cut tragically short by vengeful calamari? Will the general's wife ever forgive him for missing Ruslan and Ludmilla? And just how many eggs did Pavel steal? And where did he keep them? All of these questions and more may or may not be answered in the next exciting episode of Little Obvious. I was alive, General. Somehow, miraculously, I was alive. Some twist of fate, some hand of destiny, but I was alive. Strange as this new world was, I knew Tor must have come this way. And it was my task to find him. And it happened like this. Vale, ahora estamos en un desierto. Hemos pasado. Beat down on me relentlessly. De estar bajo el agua a estar en un desierto. Terrible. I was exhausted. Yet I could not stop. I had to go on. For seven weeks I trudged across the desert. On the second day. Please, comrade, if we may. I think we can skip the details unless you consider them to be particularly relevant to the location of Little Orpheus. Of course, General. We will simply omit the tale of the singing chasm, the oasis of mirrors, the sightings of Tolls Mienk for loft on their pterodactyls carrying parts of my crashed rocket drill over the horizon to Lemuria. Uh, wait, the what? Singing chasm? Not that bit, uh, the rocket drill. Oh yes, General, the rocket drill. But what did Toll want with it? And why Lemuria? Lemuria? Lemuria, General. I am not familiar with this le le Lemuria, comrade. Well, that is because it does not exist, General. Or at least, so I thought. Alguien lo tiene que salvar, ¿no? Supongo que esto será Lemuria. Otra palanca que activa la campana.
Vale, vuelve a colocar otra vez el puente. Bueno, más o menos. Those strange crystals seem to exert an extraordinary hold over the stone blocks and arches. When they hummed, the whole city remade itself. Where they were missing, clearly looted by some villainous thief, the city was fallen to ruin. It was like a vast musical instrument, vandalized and yet still attempting to toot. No más que no se muere por saltar alto, porque si no. Otra campana, así que necesitamos encontrar otra palanca en alguna parte. Aquí está. How poetic. I'm sure our engineers would be fascinated and baffled in equal measure. If the whole department hadn't been arrested for sedition last week, I would happily convey it to their skeptical ears. Sedition, General? Really? It is unfortunate news indeed. I am joking, comrade. How vale. poetic. <laughs> I am sure our engineers would be fascinated and baffled in equal measure. If no the me department hadn't been arrested for sedition last week, I would happily convey it to their skeptical ears. Sedition? Ah, vale, entiendo. Really? That is unfortunate news indeed. I am joking, comrade. Y este que está roto, que hay que repararlo. No, no puedo hacer nada. Ahí están los perodáctilos que, que comentó antes. Y se supone que va a volar encima de ellos. Otra vez esta gente. Ahí hay una palanca. Lo tapa. Así que tengo que pasar ahora con este tapado. Oh yes, the Mank for here, all right. Which meant whatever dastardly scheme Toll had, it was to be enacted on these burning sands. And you will explain this in due course, I imagine. Well, imminently, General. What you need to know first is this. I have told you already how parts of the devices the enslaved Mank for forced to wear came from the surface. Radio parts and so on, yes, from what you have told me. Assuming there were plenty of lost ships in the ocean, as you claim, for Toll to have dredged up what he needed to assemble them. Aha! Good! You are one step ahead of me, General. I said assuming. Of course. Assuming. Now, as I gazed in awe at the buildings rising and falling around me, I realized that the other major component of those mind-controlling helmets was crystal. Toll had raided Lemuria for them. He knew the city. He knew the crystals could amplify vibrations and waves and was using them to boost the signal of the radio parts to exert his control over the MIMF. Which meant... Imagine, General. 
such amplification could achieve when fused to the finest atomic science our great Soviet civilization has produced. Ay, que me aplasta, que Wait, me aplasta. I do not understand. Casi. You said Thor was planning on using the bomb to shatter the Earth's crust to return to the surface. A tragic mistake, General. I had not recognized the extent of his mad ambitions. You mean to imply Thor would have attempted to enslave the Russian people? Bleh. The will of the Soviet citizen is mighty and strong. To you, perhaps, as a trained warrior, but consider, perhaps instead, a humble son of a toy maker from Tomsk. Ah, yes. Perhaps we have our share of simpletons, after all. Creía que iba a activar la campana, pero no. Creo que me daba tiempo. Entonces la campana que estaba allí al fondo no sirve para nada. The vast pictograms told of a history of wonders. They seem to suggest the Lemurians were travelers from another world, where a mysterious clock seemed to stand. That is very mysterious. As mysterious as the location of little Orpheus, perhaps. <laughs> yes, of course, General. I am just getting to that. Este no se va a apartar. Hay que pasarlo por arriba, me parece. Bajar por aquí. A activar la palanca. No se caen, al menos no me aplastan. As I bravely explored that ancient city, a question was gnawing at my mind. What did it mean that the Lemurians had foreseen the coming of Tol? And who was the man from above that was celebrated as the savior of the Mienkf? It was almost as if they could read the future in their crystals. The 
bells of Lemuria tolled and tolled a roaring symphony, a crescendo of peals that set the city dancing, each note causing the crystals to shimmer and cascade with light. But the sandstorm was no natural phenomenon, and the bells did not ring for celebration. Something was very wrong here. Uh, aside from the pterodactyls and the mink and the dancing stones, the ancient magical prophecies, and the crystals and now the giant bells, you mean? If you don't want me to continue, General, then I can easily just quietly go home. Don't think Chepucho will get you out of this one, comrade. todas las de esquivar. Uh, ya veo. La campana tiene un hueco. Ah, no, me pilló. Vale, tengo que quedarme encima. Ya, ya lo he visto. Tengo que quedarme encima de los trozos de tierra, que es donde cae el agujero de la campana. Aquí. Ay, que llega. Through those magical structures, a righteous fire in my heart. I was like the Brin and Nikich, prepared to strike at the dragon who threatened my homeland. Your heroism is only surpassed by your modesty. On the contrary, ah, no. I chose the Brinia carefully, like him. Uh, alto eso, eh? I raced through those magical structures, a righteous fire in my heart. I was like the Brin and Nikich, prepared to strike at the dragon who threatened my homeland. Your heroism is only surpassed by your modesty. On the contrary, General, I chose the Uf. Brinia carefully. Like him, I am a simple peasant. It was fate that chose me to descend to the Earth's core. It was General Kumanyin who chose you to descend to the Earth's core. But don't let that get in the way of your story. Well then, award General Polkovnik Kamanyin the highest medal in the world. He already has several of them. I cannot take credit for his wisdom in sending me. A rocket drill ship built to burrow into the earth was now a mighty vessel repurposed to blast off into the skies. de dirección tan rápido repala un poquito
there was no doubt that Toll was headed for the strange world with its clock. Although to what end, I was yet to understand. But there was no time to consider. No time for questions. Paul was on the rocket. Little Orpheus was on the rocket. And wherever they were headed, I must head there too, to thwart his plans, recover my drill, and save the world! Y ahora el espacio. Will our enthusiastic yet disorientated hero be burnt to a cinder by the rocket's engines? Will he be smashed into the rock that surely, surely must be beyond the Lemurian skies? Does Nikolai Petrovich Kamanian really need any more medals? What was the strange clock? And what could it all mean? All of these questions and more will be answered, if you're extremely lucky, in the next exciting episode of Little Orpheus! Are you stuck raving mad? It was Laika. I am sure of it. That spirited little dog saved me. Laika saved you in her little space machine. I believe the correct term is capsule, General. Don't push your luck any further, Ivan Ivanovich. I fear it might snap. Oh, my apologies, General. In my excitement to explain what I discovered on the far side of the Metagalatica's interiors, I got carried away. And it happened like this. A rocky moon. It's the center of the Earth. The source of all creation, General. A place where time flowed like rivers, and boulders of raw matter rained like comets upon the cratered rock. Another miraculous escape from death. Another happy accident. It was no accident, General. Laika took me there entirely deliberately. I'm sure of that. She continues to be a heroine and a savior and protector of our great nation. Laika died in orbit. No, General, she did not. She is very much alive and happy, and currently living several miles below our feet. Laika is dead, Ivan. She most certainly is not, General. This is the real world, Tavarish. A world where you did not go to the center of the Earth, and Laika died in orbit. In my world, General, Laika is still alive. <sighs> A better world, some may argue. Very well. I will live in your world for a while longer, but time is running out. Ah, yes. Time, General. <laughs> I was just coming to that. Yo creo que al general está empezando a gustar la historia. In the distance it stood, enveloped in a mighty time storm. The world clock, General. The beating heart of all history. The Axis Mundi, the pillar of the world. Not enough to conquer Russia by drilling back to the surface with his magical mind controlling atomic radio set there. No, General. You see, what if he could fuse little Orpheus directly with the world clock? Then his message would radiate with every tick and every talk. He would not simply be the Tsar. He would be the Tsar of all time, the eternal tyrant. The literal incarnation of everything our glorious revolution stood to overthrow! Sonic! Uncanny, General! 
Parece, parece que el tiempo se ha parado. I felt no cold. The waves were motionless. Indeed, it was as if I had stepped free of those rivers of time and stood on entirely motionless ground. And there in the distance, what? Debris from Sarya and tall slave mines had washed up here, almost as if I were meant to find it. And there, amongst it, the winking of steel led me to a blasting cap. And a plan began to form. Vale, hemos vuelto atrás en el tiempo antes de que explotara el reloj. The terrain was ferocious. Explosive eruptions of fire and heat. Thunderous emissions and lethal gases. Much like your cousin Pavel, perhaps, as a result of consuming all of those stolen eggs. Ah, <laughs> General, you have been listening after all. Yo por si acaso Cuando veo ese trocito de ahí Que podría explotar, ¿sabes? De nuevo. Agartha again. But why? You are a stalling comrade. The, the clock is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock. Of course. In a flash of inspiration, I understood. It was all wrong, you see, General. That we can agree on. We should never have gone to the center, because without little Orpheus, Toll could not have become the tyrant he had. The rocket drill was his means to reach the world clock, but it was little Orpheus that enabled him. And the time, time itself, the world clock itself, was determined to make matters right. With a little help from you, of course. <laughs> Merely a simple pawn in a game played upon a cosmic scale, General. But a pawn who understood that he was being given a second chance to grab a chunk of the explosive resin that wondrous city was built upon. Y otra vez atrás, no? And I was back. The mighty river of time roared past me, carrying the weight of the whole of history with it. Even for you, this is a stretch. Our time is almost up. I have to submit my report within the hour. Time, General. Uh, time was nearly up indeed. That ancient and magical river that carried me along was surely moving inevitably towards some kind of end. Caerá. No. Hay pisarlo. Ah. Uy. Ah, me va a adelantar. Ah, 
imagino que ya no me hará falta esa roca. Enough. No more Prevalo. No more stories. No more lost worlds and space dogs. I'm full of it. It is nearly midnight, and you have not given me the adequate explanation for the whereabouts of little Orpheus and the atomic bomb. But, General, I, I am about to... to tell you what happened when I finally caught up with the villain Toll. <laughs> I, I do not care, Tavarish. I simply do not care. You have worn me down, and it is time to call a halt to this. I bear you no malice, comrade. In many ways, I admire you, but time is running out. Yes, General, yes, time, time. Because it was time itself that suddenly appeared to be on my side. Y otra vez. A ver si está la última. Perhaps the world clock was so impressed with your egg-wearing antics it decided to return you to Plutonia for a second attempt. I would strongly suggest you cut to the chase. The chase, yes. The pursuit of Tall and Little Orpheus. I stood there with the resin fragment in one hand and the blasting cap in the other, and then, just like that, a clock began to ring. The world clock? No, General, an alarm clock. My Slava alarm clock, in fact, given to me by Auntie Marsha. Uh, the, the one who married the beef investigator? The very same. And the moment I saw that clock, I knew what I had to do. Yes, 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 I am waiting. A bomb, General. A bomb to destroy a bomb. So, you decided to build a bomb, eh? A bomb to destroy little Orpheus. It was a simple plan, really, General. Yes, you are very fond of your simple plans. It was the last time I was to see those poor enslaved men from my journey. As they scurried in agitation around the base of the rocket drill, now a dreadful weapon of war in the hands of a madman, I was reminded of my mother. Your mother looked like a mienf? That is extremely disrespectful, comrade. No, I meant I was raised by my mother from an early age, of course. My childhood memories of my father were all too brief. You are rambling, comrade Pervalov. Time is running out. Dieni Rezinovi. Time will run out for us all, General, will it not? And it ran out for my father on the shores of Volga. Your father? Not at Stalingrad? He did, General. So did I. Well, so you see, General. Perhaps we are just the same, you and I. Perhaps we are all just Mienkf in the end. Well, no, no era la última vez. What possible use in the construction of a bomb could be found in the belly of a giant whale? Were you perhaps planning on using a worm as a fuse? That would be ridiculous, General. I would hate to undermine your otherwise entirely plausible account. You forget, General. The belly of the beast was full of shipwrecks. And on one of them, I was bound to find what I was looking for. Fuse wire. <laughs> Comrade. <laughs> yes. You'd forgotten all about the fuse until I reminded you, hadn't you? General, your cynicism is unbecoming to a man of your rank and stature. Y 
aquí. No, así no. ¿Y para este lado? Sí, mira por este lado. was now ticking, General. Literally. I was surrounded by time, immersed in it, floating along a river of it on a raft made of history, seeking the next moment of opportunity to hurtle backwards amongst those lost worlds. I am a patient man, Tavarish. I lost three toes in the winter outside Sharkovskaya in 42. A drunken dentist removed two frostbitten toes and one perfectly healthy one. You may therefore consider me a man blessed with an uncommon level of endurance for discomfort. I hate visiting the dentist. My uncle Vanya was a dentist, and he was a deeply strange man, notwithstanding the love he felt for his pigs. Is what? Mata. Vale, pues no es por ahí. Iba, que iba a caer encima de la rueda a veces nunca sabe con la perspectiva nunca sabe dónde va a caer Oh, ya veo. He empezado tarde. No, por ahí no es. Tiene que ser por la derecha. Todas las fases anteriores. Ocean floor and sí. that strange submerged city and those poor lost vessels. To find a shell case to hold all of my scavenged ingredients, the last piece I needed to construct my bomb. Ah yes, I have been waiting for this. General, I'm Ivan Ivanovich. Whilst you have rambled on and on about it, I have simply bided mine. I'm a patient man, as I have said. Yes, I don't feel I paid enough attention to the story about your toes. Do you have specially made shoes? Enough! Mm. Now I have your full attention. Indulge me, Tavarish. Explain to me how you made this bomb. General? Your bomb, comrade, that you so brilliantly constructed to destroy little Orpheus. Tell me how you made it. Well, uh, uh... in detail, the type of detail that should present no problem to a man who is actually capable of building a bomb, which I suspect would be an entirely different man to one who cheated on his entrance exams for the cosmonaut program. Y 
esta sí que tiene que ser la última. You are uncharacteristically silent, comrade. Cat got your tongue? If I may, General, uh, perhaps just a minute or two to uh, gather my thoughts? Mm -mm -mm. There are precious few minutes left. We have reached our conclusion, I think. Me queda el, el desierto. Yes. No. Yes, we have, General. Uh, I gazed up at the world clock and knew I had arrived at my destination. Whatever lay inside would see my journey end one way or another. But I had no idea of the marvels that awaited me. And it... The bomb, Ivan Ivanovich! Tell me how you built the bomb! It, it was a wonderful sight, the mm -hmm. world... It is two minutes to midnight, Ivan. It is time to end this story. Let us recap. Three years ago, you were sent to the center of the Earth as part of a top-secret mission to ensure the delivery of Little Orpheus, an atomic-powered capsule. You promptly vanished until you casually wandered up to Molodyozhnaya Station, three years later claiming to have saved the world but lost Little Orpheus in the process. Is this correct? Yes, General, it is, but... You are charged with many, many, many crimes against the state including desertion, lying to a superior officer, and sedition. Any one of these charges bears the punishment of execution by firing squad. General, you must be reasonable. I did my best. It's all true, I swear. I swear upon the lives of my family. Oh, do you? Auntie Marsha and Uncle Vanya, the traveling tinker and the pig dentist, or perhaps Cousin Pavel, the criminal mastermind with the unhealthy taste for eggs. How stupid do you think I am, Comrade Pavlov? Sudayu, it is all true! Maybe your toy maker, or was it watchmaker, Faza, who apparently taught you all he knew, despite being killed when you were less than five years old. I was a fast learner? You have precisely one minute to convince me not to summon the guards, and have you shot on the spot. A minute? A, a lifetime? It's all I need, General. Sí, era por ahí. I was astounded. My father, I told you, I, I think I told you, he, he was a, a toy maker, and he often played with clockwork parts. Tavarish. But this, this made all those childhood wonders pale into insignificance. And it was fortunate indeed that my uncle, my uncle... Vanya, the pink dentist? No, uh, my, my other uncle, my uncle uh, uh, Sasha, had taken me mountaineering in the Urals during my childhood, for it was only by scaling these giant mechanical parts that I would reach Little Orpheus. Yes, I had been thinking that it seems awfully convenient that you were such an accomplished climber. I don't, however, recall any mention of this Uncle Sasha in your file. He was a very private man. a very unlikely man. That was Uncle Sasha's blessing and his curse. Me pilla. Vale, 
Ese, el segundo no cae. Este no cae. Ah, sí, ahora sí me da tiempo. Those great wheels and cogs clashed and boomed. The vast hands of all time crunching forever and ever around. Ivan Ivanovich. Pendulums and springs and great big wheels and tiny little wheels. Tavarish Privalov, stop. Though at least the men for not here, especially as they seemed to infest the world below the surface. Mienf. Mienf everywhere. Mienf, mienf, mienf. Many mienf. Mienf for plenty. Mienf. You are a bambling cobra. Enough. Rápido. Ah, no, 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 no. No, si me daba tiempo. Encima de la de la madera esta no me pueden hacer nada. Where was tall? Ah, high above, on the clock face, perhaps, with his radios and his crystals. If I could just reach him, I could use the bomb. There is no bomb. You have no idea how to make a bomb. You have no idea about how to do anything one might actually expect of a cosmonaut. Mr. Bond? Ivan Ivanovich! General? Time is up. Stop talking, Tavarish. You don't know what happens next. It is obvious. You've done very well. I applaud you for your efforts and your story. It is a wonderful tale, Comrade Brivalov. I have enjoyed it immensely. But every story needs an ending. And it is clear yours does not have one. need more time. I think that even if I gave you all the time in the world, it would not be enough. No, 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 General. I, I can do this. That is, uh, I remember what happens next. I, 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 I just need to catch my breath and compose myself. We both know how this story ends, comrade. But little obvious, you haven't heard what happened. We will find out soon enough. You will be executed, and another expedition will be sent. No! No, you, you cannot! You cannot! We must never go back! You don't understand! Make me, then! Make me understand! I am a kind man, although you may not believe this. I, 
I do not want to have you shot. So help me. Make me understand. Tell me what happened to little Orpheus. It... it was... Ivan Ivanovich? It was... Uh, uh, it was... No... I'm sorry, General. I'm sorry, I have no idea. You are right. I simply cannot see what happened next. It's just... A blank, General. There's nothing there. Very tired, you see. Comrade Ivanov. Ivan. You're right. It's over, General. Perhaps you would be so kind as to write to my mother for me. Of course I will. You are a kind man, as you have said. A and, General. Yes, Ivan. Was it a good story? Oh, yes. It was an... Excellent story. Thank you, General. I am just sorry I couldn't give you an ending. Unless... General? Quiet, Tovarish. I am thinking... Unless... I, I seem to remember that there were many problems with little Orpheus during production. General? Uh, problems with the casing around the atomic battery. Uh, concerns. Concerns, General? Mm, yes, concerns. Unlikely though that might be. Yeah, it seems if I remember that it failed to secure properly. A sharp blow could spring the hatch and expose the fragile casing of the bomb to any would-be vandal. I'm not sure I follow A resourceful yet forgetful hero might, one would think, take advantage of that fact. But how, General? Where would I find something to strike it with? Mm, the son of a watchmaker would easily find something within a giant clock mechanism that resembled a hammer, surely. A hammer? Why, yes, General. I do remember now. I grasped the hammer-shaped thing on the bomb. Let's just agree it was a hammer, Ivan. Yes, of course. Let's do that. I recovered my senses, shook my head, and looked about me. In my distracted stupor, I had climbed further up the tower than I ever thought possible. In front of me was the clock face, and I gazed out through it at the sheer expense of history. And I knew whatever happened next, happened next? The hand of destiny had fallen upon your shoulder. Yes, it had. And what an extraordinary hand it was. salto oh no no pues a lo mejor no hay que 
saltar. And so, Thor was defeated. Little Orpheus destroyed, the bomb lost forever. N not just that, General. In that moment, time sprung back to its proper shape, and I found myself once more in Plutonia, as the start of my journey. But the wound in the interior sky was gone. The drill was gone. It was as if I had never been here. And they were nymph, free and happy, without the tyranny of Toll, free to pursue their simple lives. But we can never go back? Never, General. One drill, one metal sphere, one lone cosmonaut was nearly enough to destroy time and unleash the tyrant Toll upon our world. Who would think an innocuous beeping radio housed in a ball of metal could change the world so dramatically? Who indeed? But tell me. What of you? And what of your return to the surface? I stayed amongst the Mienf for as long as I could. But I came to realize they had begun to worship me as a king. No, General. I am a good socialist and could not allow this worker's paradise to become corrupted. And so I left that wonderful land for the last time. And then? And then I walked. For two years I wandered, always looking for a way home through lands and worlds almost beyond imagination. Until one day, I emerged, blinking into sunlight, and realized I was home. Until one day, I emerged? Just like that? You just found your way back to the surface? Well, General, it was a little more complicated than that. There were great obstacles to overcome, and terrible challenges to face, and incredible lands to explore. Enough, Ivan. Little Orpheus is lost forever. The interior is sealed. You have returned with a story of socialism, triumphing over incredible odds. It is, as I said, enough for one night. Enough for my report, at least. General, if I may... Comrade Ivan Ivanovich Privalov, you are found guilty of all charges brought against you and sentenced to execution by firing squad. However, having listened to your story... I believe you are quite mad. In other words, I find your madness guilty, not you. And we cannot execute madness. And indeed, there are lessons to be learned, even in the depths of this madness. Perhaps the Americans were right to send the chimp after all. So, General? Get out of my sight, Ivan. Go home. Hmm? Enjoy a state pension as a madman. Just make sure I never see you again. Yes, General. Of course, General. Anything you say. I shall be small and quiet and live a life without excitement and... Out! <gasps> Until one day I just emerged. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Very good, Tavarish. Very good indeed. Who's the best space dog? Oh, the Moya Horoshaya, Horoshenkaya Moya, the Prosto Cosmichiskaya. Eh? Who's the best hairy cosmonaut? It is indeed a lovely sunset, and it reminds me of the skies of Peru. I didn't? I never told you about the wonderful sky city? Well, it was an extraordinary place, but one filled with dangers. 
Well, it might have been simple for you to cross it, but you were in a space capsule. I had to rely on my own two feet, my Nashki. Feet which, I might add, had just crossed the interior, beaten the villain tall, and helped inspire the Mienkv to a workers' revolution. <coughs> oh, that's all very easy for you to say. But your idea of civilized behavior is licking your own bottom in public. No. My adventures above the clouds were filled with untold dangers, death-defying escapes, and some really quite extraordinarily large Bielaribitsa. Weeks had passed since I left Plutonia, and one evening, exhausted, I simply fell asleep at the foot of a strange windmill. And when I awoke... Well, that thought didn't cross my mind. I was exhausted after all. This is besides the point, my nosy canine friend. What matters is this. When I awoke, the windmill and the ground around it had been carried high into the air. What magic was this? It was a magia. <laughs> as unlikely, perhaps, as a suitcase-sized dog orbiting the center of the Earth for many years. <laughs> Quite. Quick as a flash, Kakmonia, my training leapt into play, and I began to paddle the strange contraption through the clouds in search of answers. It is entirely possible that a miller who owns a windmill capable of levitating high into the air may also own a flying machine. Oh, now you're just being silly. May I continue my recounting of how I sailed over the sky gardens towards the mystical city of Peru? Oh, oh, oh I must, my moy ushatidrug. I must. ¿Tiene a Laika con él? Es que todo lo que ha dicho es cierto. Todavía no sé si todo esto se lo está inventando o es verdad. Powerful emanations! What mighty gusts! What an epic squall! They reminded me of Cousin Pavel, yes! But whereas his rearward zephyrs could curdle milk and tarnish the teaspoons, these magical wafts only serve to carry me aloft and onwards! Esto que, que cambia la dirección del viento. No veo que el viento cambie de dirección. Pero voy a probar. Voy a ponerlo así hacia arriba. Y voy a saltar. Ah, mira. Ahora sí, parece que va hacia arriba. Antes iba hacia abajo. But something was afoot in the gardens of Perun. This horrid muck staining the surfaces and making my nose curl. <laughs> yes, it was positively uh, pavilion in scent. But it did not belong here. I think I once told you of Auntie Marsha's passionate encounter in a cable car with the manganese entrepreneur from Chiatura. 
Now, Auntie Masha told me that there was a disagreeable stain and smell all around those factories and smelting works. Our industry is not without its dangers. Could it be that the once bucolic gardens of Perun were being corrupted by unchecked pollution? After all, science is a double-edged sword, my bristly confidant. <laughs> Consider Zemichov. <laughs> of course, of course. I apologize. Prashu prashenya. Two-headed dogs is perhaps a rather insensitive analogy, but not without justification in this instance. I have seen the blemished lands around Narilsk, but I could not believe that I would find such pollution here. But this was nothing, nothing to the true horror of what was shortly to unfold. Alto aquí. No pasa nada. Vale, se supone que ahora el viento va hacia arriba. Pero no me lleva muy... No, no, me, no pasa de ahí, así que... Vamos a intentar... Si me deja, ahora. Vamos a intentar que vaya hacia abajo. Terrible, strashnaya like machina spewing its poison into the air had created a monstrous thing. A being, a malignant spoiler of the noble and pure, and it had taken on the form of its prey. Well, of course. No, конечно, I was the prey. The citizens of Perun had clearly long since fled the evilly scented smog, but I inadvertently wandered into its lair. Oh, I know, I know. Misfortune seemed to dog... Oh, sorry, I do apologize. To follow my every footstep. But no time to ponder, no time to bemoan the hand that fate had dealt me. No, all that was on my mind was escape, Kanishna. Yes, it was most interesting. The windmill seemed to be from an earlier age. Perhaps this was a devastating warning of the destructive power of unfettered industrialization. I most certainly had not forgotten about the windmills. I did not get carried away. You are missing the point. Perhaps because you are only a small dog. Oh, a brilliant, brave, spacefaring dog, of course, but a small Savashka nonetheless. If you perhaps listened more and interrupted less, I am just getting to the explanation of the windmills. Stinky nemesis was back, but more interesting was the change in the city. Me mata. So when... Tengo que esperar. Ah, mira, se cortó. Eh, se corta el líquido, así que tengo que esperar justo a que se corte para poder pasar. My stinky nemesis was back, 
But more interesting was the change in the city. <laughs> the windmills were fading out, clearly obsoleted, mothballed, relics. <laughs> Instead, a sense of an obsession with power was apparent. <laughs> Vast engines, terrible machines, ever hungry and reliant on the rabid consumption of fuel, the production of toxic fumes, and choking gases. Pride, my pushisti compadre. Pride, ambitia, ambition. The dark side of science. Zemechov's head too many. Oh, don't be ridiculous, dog. Only a Durak with the intellectual capacity of a ringworm would think windmills are in any way harmful. Supongo que habré que saltar ahí, ¿no? Esto es una cesta de un globo. Ah, pues no, mira. Yo iba a saltar hacia el otro lado. Sí. Ah, hay que saltar por aquí. No, no llega. Imposible, no llega. Así que... Ah, claro. Empujando la cesta. Hacía tanto tiempo que no hacía esto que no me acordaba ya. tiempo, venga, corre y salta a la cuerda sí of course, you never had much of a chance to travel Sarcasm doesn't suit you. You don't have the tail for it. You do, at least, have a tail. Mind you, family gossip maintained that so did Uncle Rabliem. Although it was apparently little more than a stub and a source of considerable discomfort and social anxiety. The question of whether or not Uncle Rabliem wagged his stub is very much off topic. What I am trying to say is that your upbringing on the streets of Moscow meant you never saw the blackened fields of Magnitogorsk. The sacrifices made by the valiant citizens of that industrial heartland as they drowned in their own blight, even as they powered the state forwards. I was reminded of Magnitogorsk as I wandered through those fields of pipes and foundries. And I wept for the loss of innocence that so often goes hand in hand with progress. <laughs> El eco. Indeed, 
I just evaded the slimy, oily grasp of that man-made Vodzinoi, his petroleum stink clogging my nostrils and making my head thump. And I felt a great stirring within me. <laughs> yes, much like I assume Cousin Pavel. May he never get loose again. But no, quite different. This was no volcanic upbubbling of gastric malintent. No, it was the roaring fires of justice once more ignited within me. I felt a swell of patriotic fervor and knew the hand of destiny had fallen on me once more. Yes, what a hand it was. I could not see this great wonder sink into an abyss of poison and bile. The Perunians may have been forced to abandon their city, but I had saved the world once before and was ready to answer the call again. Strange metal bilaribitsa, clearly designed to swim through the air. I was amazed. And there was more. Beneath the fins, I spotted the apertures of hoses and was reminded of the time Auntie Agrafina devised a contraption to water all of her copious algae beds simultaneously with one flush of the toilet by a system of pipes and valves that ran throughout her house. Orzhna Takskazite, in a manner of speaking, yes. Her algae were most irrigated, although her neighbor Victor was washing his trousers in the sink at the time and was bruised quite severely about the face and body. But these were no ordinary flying metal fish. They were designed to expel air, fresh air, and push back the polluted clouds. Vale, está cortando toda la contaminación. There is, of course, a fine tradition of looking to nature to solve problems of a scientific or military persuasion. Yes, as you well know. My nephew, Sergei... Yes, the very same. Poor lad with his dermatological eruptions. Well, Sergei was stationed recently at Kazatcha Buchta, where dolphins... <laughs> dolphins? We're being trained as brilliant aquatic agents of socialism. Why not then be inspired by marine life? Why, there is a fish, I have heard, that can shoot jets of water from beneath the surface to knock its prey off little tiny twigs and into its mouth. If you were to tell the average mushroom sheriff that a dog would orbit the Earth, I suspect you would receive a similarly sneering response. No, that is because you are a small, hairy hound of uncertain parentage. I, on the other hand, am a cosmonaut, the product of many months of training, and I realized the answer to pollution was here all along. The Peronians, tragically, had simply never had time to finish their fleet. If only I could find a working, flying fish. If only... Ah, ya está aquí otra vez. If only... Ah, no. Yes, If only. Ve aquí va a salir otra vez el mi copia.
It made perfect sense, of course. <laughs> the poisonous Duhatas that engulfed Barun was like a nasty cold. <laughs> and you know what to do with a cold to rid yourself of it. <laughs> you may not get colds, but nor can you operate pea shelling machinery. So, don't get ideas above your station. We humans on the other hand may use up to 16 supongo. million perfectly unshelled peas in an average shift. But we are martyrs to our sinuses. <laughs> but to clear them, aha, these are remedies we Russians have no, prepared no. over the long centuries of harsh winters. <laughs> Onions. Oh. A quick snifter of onion oil will clear your head faster than a Pragviev can clear a hypothetical minefield. Yes, if I could find a functional fish, I would become that onion. <laughs> Oye, este no se volverá a abrir. Hay que encontrar la combinación correcta. El del centro corta el que está en la derecha, vale. Y este activa los dos, es el del centro y el de la derecha. Y este de aquí, los de los extremos. No, solo el último. Así que este apagará los dos y ya está. Si lo derroto de una vez y otra vez cojeando. I was close. I could feel it. Yes, yes, the working fish, the ripka. I could feel I was at the heart of Perun, and my noxious pursuer had renewed its chase with a terrible vigor. Far now, I just had to keep going, keep pushing. It's almost as if you knew, Pavel. Uncanny, double tilt. There she was. A beautiful sight, her scales shimmering in the sunlight, her fins poised for action, her onion cannons primed for a great aerial conflict unseen in the annals of human endeavor. 
And you are just jealous. It was a bigger flying machine than yours. <laughs> no, Peleus Powell. It was time for science to fight back. <laughs> yes, my hairy compatriot. Ayachale, onwards to victory! <laughs> Podemos ver el pez, a ver. Ah, sí. Puedo disparar o algo, sí, puedo disparar. va más rápido de lo que parece con darle un poquito se mueve bastante en ningún sitio en la boca sí ahora cuando hace eso sí la golaña No sé si me ha dado. Ah, que tengo que empezar desde el principio otra vez. Hay que hacer toda la fase entera sin que te maten. Yo creo que sí.
para ver cuántas veces son para derrotarlo. a miracle. I found myself swooping through beautiful clear skies. The strange interior sunlight gleaming on the sides of my fishy vessel. I heard birds clear their little throats and begin their wondrous gvalt. The wind gently humming on the fins. And then, all of a sudden, under it all... Well, you see, in my hurry, it didn't even occur to me to check how much fuel was carried in the strange. The horrible splutter, the engines choked and died. And suddenly we were plummeting downwards towards our doom. Básicamente lo que ha dicho es que ha limpiado todo todo de veneno. Why? My Aunt Agrafina met her untimely demise being late for a fungal sculpting seminar and making exactly the same error. Only, unfortunately, it left her stranded in sub-zero temperatures just outside Pravachetsinsk. She wasn't found until 18 years after her own funeral, but was perfectly preserved. Remarkable, really. It is beside the point, yes. So... There I was. My fabulous ship had become a terrible prison. I was hurtling to my almost certain death. My triumph turned to tragedy. But then... Well, you know what happened next. Even so, boy Magnati Trug, that is a story for another time. A most extraordinary story, of course. Filled with dangers and wonders. And canals. And invasions and the strange doorways to other worlds. But perhaps too long a story for now. <laughs> yes, indeed, my canine Tavarish. Time for soup. Auntie Agrafina's famous borscht. Coming. <laughs>